guys have a great day so yun lang yan iwan ang bad vibes out the window and into the bedroom dapat good vibes lang lahat tayo sama-sama may good vibes ikaw, ako lahat tayo na hindi makatulog na merong Insomnia! Ito na, let's start the Tim Yap Show Season 6 Reloaded Yap Dates right now. Ang ating Yap Date for tonight, ang favorite ko at ang favorite ng bisita natin for tonight, Cats of Instagram. Unang-una, hashtag MogwaiTheCat. Sino bang hindi naaaliw sa cute na cute at chubbing chubbing cat ni Anne Curtis Smith? Kulang lang mag-concert din siya. Tingnan mo ang picture ko ni Mogwai the Cat. Talagang nakakaaliw. Cat <laughs> number 2. Hashtag Meredith Grey. Kaninang pusa si Meredith Grey? Walang iba kundi kay Taylor Swift. Taylor named Meredith after one of her favorite characters in the TV soap Grey's Anatomy. Mayroon siyang older sister na si Olivia Benson. Together, they comprise Taylor's wonderful world of YouTube videos filled with cats, cats, and cats. At may guesting pa sila sa The Ellen Show. Would you believe? <laughs> Next cat is Karl Lagerfeld's cat, Choupette. One of the most famous figures in the fashion industry has grown a liking to cats. Ito ngang si Chupet ay meron pang Instagram at Chupet's Diary pati na rin sa Twitter. Nag-debut siya on January 6, 2012 at binigay sa kanya. Itong pusa na to noong 2011 ng French model na si Jabi Coney. At dahil dyan, sabi nga ni Karl Lagerfeld mismo, baka naman daw maging masikat pa ang kanyang cat kaysa sa kanya. <laughs> From international cats, let's go to local cats. Singer Jolin Virai has a fondness for collecting cats na napupukod niya sa tabi-tabi dahil siya ay naaawa dito. Tignan mo ang kanyang bahay at ang Instagram feed ni Jolin Virai walang laman, kundi cats. One more certified cat convert is Tessa Prieto Valdez. Nakakuha siya ng bago niyang cat na yung isang mainly. Ang pangalan at mainly Prismo. Yan ang kanyang Instagram account kung saan makikita mo nakikipagsalamuha si Prismo sa kanyang mga human counterparts kagaya ng asawa ni Tessa na si Dennis at ang anak na si Annika at Athena. Nagpasikat sa mga restaurants gaya ng Chibo, Luso at Grace Park Dining. Walang iba kundi si Chef Margarita Forrest, certified cat lover din. In fact, nung nakuha ko si Juanita the Cat, siya talaga nagpadala ng bet, siya nagayos ng lahat. Tinatawag ko siyang Ninang ni Juanita the Cat. So dahil dyan, maraming salamat Margarita Forrest. <laughs> Last but not the least, hashtag Juanita the Cat. Mula nung napulot ko siya sa kali at inuwi at inalagaan at pinakilala sa mga kaibigan, ato na, hindi niyo na magpigil ang aking mga Instagram posts about Juanita the Cat. Nakita niyo siya mula pagka-baby, hanggang siya naglalaro, at hanggang ngayon, that she's now a fat cat. At kahit ano mangyari, mahal na mahal ko si Juanita the Cat. Yep, next, she revolutionized Filipino cooking with her passion and determination to take things to the next level. Ano kaya ang mga next plans for the future? Malalaman natin sa pagbabalik lang sa Kenya Jones with Margarita Forrest as our guest. Mahastag ka na ba? Welcome back to the Kenya Show. If there is one Filipina who's trailblazed in cuisine, then she would be it. What a great honor and pleasure it is to have her tonight as a guest on the Timmy Up Show Season 6. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Margarita Forrest. Hello. Hello, guys. 
Aida. How are you? Hi, I am Hello. fine and happy to be here. Yeah, hey, Margarita, uh, the past few years, you know, we've, we've been a fan of your work. Oh, we've, thank you. Yeah, we've enjoyed your food, whether it be Chibo, uh, whether it be your catering all over the events and weddings in Manila. So we are so happy that uh, somebody like you exists because you always thank you. keep on pushing um, cuisine. You keep always, uh, always find ways to give us different tastes and make us, you know, explore the world to our taste buds. Well, you know, it's really been inspiring. It's been 27 years for me doing this kind of work, but it still feels new. And I guess it's because of people like you who appreciate the work that we do that I'm still around. Wow, for the people who don't know, how did you start? Oh, well, it's it's been a while. It's been 27 years. And actually, I started in fashion um, in New York um, many years ago. and. Um, the fashion part was fun because I love clothes and it was a good time to be in New York. Studio 54 days, wow. right? And my mom. With your mom. Had, yeah, she was, you know, she had a really nice circle of friends and. Um, she was the queen of Studio 54. Best friend lang naman niya, si Steve Robel. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it was a good time to be there. I was, I was in, um, I mean, I just finished high school and we were partying with my mom. So I kind of like absorbed that How kind cool of vibe, is that? right? Yeah. Partying and, with my mom. Exactly. And eventually, Eventually, you know, she, she knew the friends of Valentino and eventually I got a job working with him at his office and maybe that's where I fell in love with everything Italian. And um, it was nice to be dabbling in, in fashion, being around that circle, but at nights I would find myself making excuses and inviting people to dinner, cooking for them, making pasta. And after a while, I mean, I found myself doing the cooking more than, than enjoying the clothes part and, and the fashion scene. So when um, in 1986, when, when the revolution happened here and my family went back home after my grandfather died, it, um, it felt like a vacuum being back in Manila. And I was like, oh no, I wanna either go back to New York or go back and do the cooking and really find out if that was what I wanted to do, you know, as a, a profession. So I asked my mom if I could go to Italy. I asked a friend to find me a teacher who would just teach in her house. And um, I, I went to Florence for four months in, in 1986. And I just felt like a homing pigeon. It just felt so right. So that's when it started. Then you started cooking and cooking. Yeah. And cooking cooking nonstop. Yeah, from small dinners for, for just families or friends of my mom, friends of friends, until eventually the, the job started to get bigger and bigger. And um, this was, you know, in, in the late 80s. And at that time, I was your age probably. And, um, you know, 20s, in, in my, so. yeah, in my like late 20s. And I was, partying as much as you are partying now. <laughs> so um, it was a real kind of like crossroads for me because I enjoyed the partying, but because I was doing that work, I mean, I, I, it kind of like I lost my, my, my balance. I think I started to party more and I, when it was time to do the work, I was like either late or disorganized. Or hungover. Right. right. Mm. So eventually I kind of like had to make a choice. This was like 1990 and that's also when I had Pado. And I think that it was he who kind of brought me down to earth. The fact that I had to be responsible for another life. And that's when I decided, okay, I need to make a choice. Is this what I'm gonna do as a profession and really do it for life? Because in the end, I think the food business is glamorous, especially, you know, nowadays you see a lot of people who wanna open restaurants because it's like the best thing to do and it's like the most um, kind of visible, exciting career yeah, which to follow. Your passion yeah, and but business together. Yeah, yeah, in the end, it's like, it looks good in the front, but the only way you can be successful is if you have the discipline and you have to, to be committed to work hard and you have to do as much of the dirty work and you not are just a dirt, the glamour part. And you are, so, uh, you know, of course you are very glamorous but you're one person who never says no to the dirty work. Well, yeah, you have to be hands-on and I think at the end, although I know I'm like too much of a micromanager sometimes, but I think that, you know, that's that's what allows you to, to be in the business for the long haul. Wow. So, you know, after Chibo and then Luso and all your, your Chibo de, de, de Margarita, yes, the catering, uh, the catering business, business right. how, how many, what, what was the biggest number that you catered for? Oh, 
Okay, very recently yes. for Ding Dong and Marion's wedding, yes. there was a thousand one hundred twenty people wow. sit down. So that was a real huge, huge logistical challenge. And the meat was so good. The, oh, the, thank the dish you. was so you could cut it with the fork, you know. It was yeah, so I soft. think that yeah, it was a, a real um, kind of super logistical, not the nightmare, but the real challenge. And because it was a, a little over a thousand people, so we set up four kitchens, four different kitchens that service 300 people each. So you can just imagine. But wow. I think that what was really good about it was that the bride and groom were very clear about what they wanted from the onset. And they also had a great event management team, a great design team. And I guess my staff as well, you know, they were very organized. And sometimes I tried so to stay to away. With. I tried to stay away because if I arrived too early, I just bug them and then I change things and then I just <laughs> then then they lose their 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 balance. So, but, uh, for, so I wedding? stayed away and I arrived late, so it was so smooth. <laughs> well, and you flew in from Japan that day. Yes, too. I was away on on our family Christmas. Mm -hmm. holiday but because it, you know it was a real commitment to do Ding and Ding Dong and Marian's wedding I, I wanted to be sure to be around and um, really kind of also experience the, the entire journey because it was from the planning stages it was not they didn't plan very early they only started um, in late September and that's kind of short for a wedding. Because weddings usually, uh, it's like from the a past year. year. A year. A plan yeah. on the hand, But somehow, I find that when we do weddings and the planning stages are short, I think that the... Adrenaline. The adrenaline and then also the kind of like, you know, the, the energy level, the excitement level is still so fresh. And the ideas are also very, very new and, and exciting. So there's it doesn't really dip. It yeah. just kind of like goes all the way up until until the day of the event where everything is, you know, kind of like a dream come true. Because if it's like a year, you'll you'll go look at your calendar and go, they haven't gotten married yet. Yeah. <laughs> no, and then by the time you're meeting again, coming close to the wedding date, you're like, oh, what was that again that we talked about? It, there's kind of like yeah, a dip. too much yeah, yeah, too much time that passes in yes. between. So but so aside from Marin and Ding Dong, there's also the Pope. There's also the president yeah. and a long, long list of notables that Margarita has served. Uh, her, her food has touched their mouths. Ayan, oh. lahat ng mga yung pag-uusapan natin because there's so many to talk, so much to talk about with Margarita and food. That is, uh, it drives, it, it drives my, uh, <laughs> I'm salivating now just thinking of the food that you have served. Lahat ng mga yung pag-uusapan natin with Margarita and food. We are still here on the Team Lab Show Season 6 with Margarita Falls. What was it like uh, serving food for the Pope? Well, you know, I have to be honest, the Pope didn't eat the food that I served. But we served the early breakfast for all the attendees who were going to be there at the Pope's reception. I think that the Pope um, was very, very particular about wanting to be visible, celebrating, mostly with the victims of Yolanda. So most of his his meals, I think, were, were done at the Nunchature. Um, but at the palace, we were very, very happy and honored to serve everybody who was going to meet him. But at least we got to see him from afar. I know, and I yeah. saw the picture uh, that uh, our friend took of your mom. Right, right? yeah, that, that was really, I mean, uh, you know, my, my mom doesn't wake up during the day, so she still had her shades on at 8 in the morning. But, you know, she's, she woke up to make sure that she could meet him, and she was very lucky that she got to shake his hand and, and kind of kiss his ring. And um, I'm, I'm just very happy for Jesse because she was the one who got to cook for him yes, really yes. often. And um, I think that 
It was perfect for her because some people have told me that there was a time in Jessie's life where she wanted to be a nun. Exactly. So, you that's know, true. I'm really happy for her and I mean, I'm just I'm just proud that you know we were also around, you know, to at least be within meters of the pope. But still the people who had the lugao and the very simple pancit station that we did during that day. I mean, you know, we were also very very happy to be at that event. Wow, sarap naman for sure ng lugao and ng pancit na yon. <laughs> Margarita, what are some of the most memorable meals that you've served? Well, you? um for me, I think um very recently, you know, when we do the Vandoner receptions at Malacanang, um, it's nice because the setting is always very elegant. It's a reception for the diplomatic corps, but it, we also need to create a menu that suits the taste, you know, of our host, of the president. So it's very, very much fun for me to put the menu together because he loves like chicharron and longanisa, things like that. Wow, fun and, stuff. Yeah, so, Yummy. so we did a really elegant, you know, longanisa bar and it was a lot of longanisas from different parts of wow. the Philippines, like from, what, from north to south. Vegan, we had from Tugegarao, we had from Negros, we also had um, an another one from Davao that was made special for, for that event. And it was nice, we served them with little baby quail fried eggs and people were eating little pots of sinangag. And you know, they were all in their finery and all the piña and all their barongs, but they were eating breakfast food. I love so it. it was, they it all was a like lot of fun. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Garlic great. bread oh, after. Oh, oh. <laughs> And then, um, but for you, who are the people that, I remember one time, no, we were in Australia and uh, you almost uh, died, you almost died to, because of a chef. Yeah, Tetsuya. I remember. Tetsuya. Tetsuya. Exactly. Oh my gosh, yeah, we yeah. were able to have a, have, um, a, a meal at his restaurant, yes. shake his hand, get to chat with him a little bit. And I told him, you know, this woman almost died. Just to see you. Yeah, because I was in in I was in London um, the year before, and I was so excited seeing um, the flower shop at the Liberty Department Store, which is like the most beautiful department store in London. And I didn't look, and obviously there when you cross the street, it's you look the other way, and I didn't look. And that night I had a booking at Tetsuya's restaurant, and obviously, you know, I mean. I, I, I got sideswiped by a car, ended she up in the, the ER. Street. Yeah. But still made it to Tetsuya. That wow. <laughs> what about passion? I know. Right? Galing. <laughs> and how many years has uh, Chibo been? Uh, it's been. It's going to be celebrating its debut actually yeah, in August. We're turning years. 18. And you know, it's a, it's a really nice feeling because um, I think that in this industry, um, if, if you make three years, I think that spells the difference. And you know, we're, we're gonna be turning 18 and it's it's really um, heartwarming. And I have to say thank you to everybody who supported us all these years and made us last this long with 10 stores. Wow. So we're very thankful to all of you who enjoy Chivo and support it. After this debut, what, what else uh, does uh, Margarita Forest want? What else do you want to innovate when it comes to food? You know, you, you just uh, recently did Grace Park, which is uh, from the farm, farm to, table to the table kind of concept. Kind of concept. Well, I think that um, lately what's keeping me occupied really is my advocacy to push Filipino food, you know, on the global stage. And um, we're, we're very happy because um, it's nice that this whole Madrid Fusion thing is happening. Um, it's what very is Madrid exciting. Fusion for the people well, who don't know about it? Actually, Madrid Fusion is the most important chef's congress, I think, that happens in the world. And it's a place where all the chefs converge. It was actually started by the likes of Ferran Adria, the guy who wow. started the innovations with the molecular gastronomy and all that. And it's a venue where chefs present their latest ideas and people share um, you know, the, the latest trends and um, discuss um, a lot of the innovations that are happening in the industry. And what happens there too is there's a trade fair that um, showcases a lot of the new gadgets, a lot of the mo more interesting new ingredients. The chef's toys. Right, Man. exactly. It's like Disneyland for yeah, us wow. in the industry. I remember when I was, uh, I went to Australia uh, with, with these top chefs of the country. And yeah, I, 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 I,
kitchen. Oh, look at the refrigerator. Look at the tomato. tomato, the produce. Yeah, yeah. Right? So what's, what's really nice about Madrid Fusion is I've had a chance to visit um, maybe four years in the past, starting from 2007. And every year, they feature a country and its cuisine. So, I mean, I was thinking about it um, just last year, and I mentioned it to Secretary Jimenez, who's a real trailblazer to with, you know, with innovations for tourism. And I told him, you know, we should try to get the Philippines featured because it's like we've been working so hard to get our cuisine out there, and maybe now's the time. I mean, people are starting to take notice. So. Um, he got really excited about the idea and he said, you know, he says maybe we should take it a step further. Instead of just getting the Philippine cuisine featured over there, why don't we invite them to do Madrid Fusion in Manila? That's a great, what a says, great idea. We have a story. We were under Spanish rule for 333 years. They influenced us. And to make a long story short, he presented the, the idea to them and they, 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 liked, they it. liked it. So it's happening in April. So we're all really, really excited that the likes of Elena Arzac and um, uh, Andoni uh, Jose Luis uh, and, uh, Aduris of Andoni Aduris of Mugaritz is coming with six superstars. other yeah superstars. There's Paco Roncero um, and uh, Rene Frezias. They're all Ramon Frezias. They're all coming and they're presenting their ideas while. Um, you guys. Eight of us Filipino wow. chefs are Who also going to go Filipino on stage. Chefs? Well, you have Jay Gamboa, mm -hmm. um, Fernando Aracama, um, JC Deteri, also Spanish chefs who are based yes. here. So there's uh, Chele Gonzalez of Vasque, you have Pepe. Pepe, Pepe. Chef Pepe. Yeah, of, Chef uh, Pepe of Rambla. Yes. Then there's Mirna Segismundo, and of course the young superstar Bruce Ricketts, who's also going to be presenting in Flo Chala. Wow. And, um, and of course, there's Rob Benson too. Mm -hmm. um, and it's going to be really exciting. And apart from that, Mirna and I are going to be presenting Kinilao in Madrid next week. Wow, Kinilao. So, yeah, so Ang it's sarap. the first time mm. Filipino chefs are going to be on a stage at Madrid Fusion. And we're really excited to represent the Philippines. The Philippine booth will be having a lot of beautiful ingredients from chicharron to asin to tabanang talangka. Because I think. Huh. The chefs from there are going to look for inspiration with us. From us? Yeah, so and it's going to be nice. that's where the real fusion will happen, diba? Okay, so uh, what, uh, how, for people who want to be part of this Madrid Fusion, where should they uh, call to get tickets? Well, they should um, check the website, Madrid Fusion Manila, and um, all the information is there for those who want to be um, Congress delegates and to, to watch all the presentations and also those who want to have booths to sell their products. So it's going to be um, a, a trade fair and a chef's congress as well. That's great. Wow. More than good vibes. Kakagutom vibes. Yeah, it's, uh, it's really exciting. And now I think that, you know, the, the, the eyes are going to be focused on the Philippines. It's really great. good vibes, hindi lang good vibes, pero kakagutong vibes with everything that Margarita has told us. Okay, that is exciting times up ahead for Filipino gastronomy. Sabi ko nga, dapat laging good vibes para laging good night. Kasama si Margarita Forrest, you are watching. Good night. Good night.